Hello everyone, it is Jesus Aviles from Hacking Weeks. Today we are going to show you how to basically DDoS with Python. Uh, it's going to be a super simple server with a very basic vulnerability and a straightforward uh, exploit that we will then script. So let's start with the server. So in this case, I'm going to be using Python's Flask library or framework, I guess, to create an API where you give it the nth Fibonacci number. And well, you give it n and it gives you the nth Fibonacci number. So if you were to give it one, it would give you one. You give it two, it gives you one, three, two, so on and so forth. So if you say like, I want the eighth Fibonacci number, it's gonna give you 13, then 21, then uh, what, 30? I don't know, I don't know all of them by heart, but yeah, it just goes on and on giving you these Fibonacci numbers. And we're gonna program it in a recursive way that sets it up to be vulnerable as we'll see in a moment. So, I will finish up the code real quick, test everything out, and then we can move on to the pen testing phase. Okay, so now we're ready to begin pen testing and we very quickly can notice that this converts whatever you give it to an integer. Uh, and if there's an exception, it just quits down the server afraid that you're trying to hack it, right? Which means that we can give it something that can't be converted an integer into an integer and it will crash. Additionally, since it's recursive, we can just give it a huge number and again, it'll cause an exception um, because Python has a limit to how deep a recursion tree can go and the program will crash. This part is pretty simple. All we're gonna do is use Python's requests library to try both exploits. We'll just keep sending over and over and over again something that can't be converted into an integer as well as something that's really big to cause that recursion error. So, I hope that's given you a basic idea of how the DOS aspect works. Now to distribute it, you would just have a command and control server, um, just with a centralized server basically telling them what the target is and the client executing the script on them. And there you go, that's it. That's how DDoS works. This has been a very simple overview, but I hope you continue learning about this fascinating attack vector. Thank you so much for your time, bye-bye.